Hello, and welcome to another episode of the World Extreme Medicine Podcast. I'm Mark Hannaford, the founder of World Extreme Medicine, and I'm joined today by former WEM conference speaker and my friend Jason Fox, a former Royal Marine commander and a special forces sergeant turned explorer, author, and TV star, perhaps best known for his role as the instructor on the gruelling SAS Who Dares Wins, and also as the presenter of Inside the Real Narcos. So, Foxy, brilliant to talk to you. Um, I know that your year, like virtually everybody in the world, has been completely turned on, uh, you know, turned on its head by COVID and the isolation that's been um, been imposed on, on all of us. How are you? Um, yeah. How are you finding that? Um, firstly, thanks for having me, Mark. So, pleasure, a pleasure. But. Um, to be honest with you, if I'm brutally, brutally honest, I'm not finding it that bad. You know, I I mean, if you rewind back to the days in the military, I'd periodically get sent on my own lock on lockdown with a group of people that they were the only ones I ever sort of socialised with for a period of like six to nine months. So I've sort of just applied that to this. Obviously, it's slightly different because... We don't really know when the end is at the moment, but I just set myself routines, got kept myself busy, been busier now than I ever have been, weirdly. But um, yeah, I'm sort of like just sort of, there's, there's nothing, everything that is happening is out of my control, so I'm not worried about it too much. You know, obviously I'm, I'm worried about other people, so I keep my, you know, I keep my discipline on on point with regard to you know hygiene cleanliness and moving around and not meeting people all the time and stuff like that so yeah for me i'm just sort of like taking what i've learned doing lockdown in a military sense of the sort of uh idea and just sort of duplicated it across to this you mentioned there um you know not worrying about the stuff that you can't control and that's been a re- recurring theme in the interviews that we've had but especially with adventurers and people who are who are like Lou Rudd and and Mike Barrett who are involved in exploration mm. would you say that um, a lesson you've learned from the military or was it a lesson you've learned from your sub your subsequent career as an explorer and adventurer I think it's something that has always taught to me as in it taught you without you realizing it in the military is to do what you can do, control what you can control. And then the bits that you can't, there's no point paying them too much attention because it's what are you going to do? And I think it just gets, it gets reconfirmed when you go off outside of the military and do the adventurous side of things. Because um, again, you're phoning to those situations, you know, if I sort of like, think back to when I've been stuck on a boat with Aldo Kane and you know big seas are inbound and the storms are whipping up a, a horrible scene outside there's nothing you can do other than do what you've been taught to keep yourself safe you know it's about honing in on all your skills that you've learned and then riding it out you know I think when you're in the middle of the the Atlantic the stuff that you can't control is very much in your face like those big waves coming towards you the weather system setting upon you now in but you've got a very task focused um experience that you're going through but as you mentioned before we're not we're not quite sure how long isolation is going to last and what actually life is going to look like on the other side so how do you keep yourself sort of balanced in terms of um not being too affected by the stuff that you can't control i mean are you an avid news watcher or do you ration yourself how do you deal with that sort of onslaught of social media and media that's giving stories about well you know a multitude of different sort of inputs and sort of opinions i'm not um i don't ration myself i I probably still watch and read more news than i should do i'm still i'm i'm a person that's very hungry for information so i like to cast an eye over it regularly just to see what's going on and how the landscape is changing but i think um certain bits of it i'll always take with a pinch of salt i'll take a bit of each and you know 
try and keep myself educated. But on the flip side to that, I won't allow myself to be, um, what's the word? I won't allow myself to worry about things that haven't yet happened because they might not happen. As in like with regard to sort of horror stories or negative ways of looking at things. I'm very much more a person that lives in the now. And I think that does stem from the military. You plan for all the different eventualities when you train. You plan for all different eventualities when you plan and you brief. And then it's a case of knowing what your goals are. And for us as a society at the moment, it's to come out the other end so we can then rebuild our lives and get back to normal. So, and then once you're in that, and that's what we're in at the moment, we're in the sort of like, we're sort of in the, the execution phase of trying to keep everyone safe and then get through to the other side. So it's a pet case of taking every day as it comes at you. And that's what you used to do on, your, on the ground as a military operator. You'd go out, you already knew what you needed to do. Your skill set was honed. For us, it's about not moving around too much, staying at home, keeping clean, going to do the essential shopping, doing work as and when you can safely. And then it's about each day as it comes at you and that's what you do on the ground and then you react as well just react to things that happen each time if you're given another three weeks lockdown you react to that and make sure you continue in the way that you've been acting if that makes sense the, i'm going to ask you a question that stems from the question is essentially how do you think life will look on the other side of covid but actually what i wanted to ask you is that as a sort of a rider to that have you ever been in an operation where you've gone into the operation or the expedition and come out the other side and society and because you've been disconnected from society you've come back to a society that has changed for instance when well, i went to, on a long long trip to namibia and i came back to headlines in the newspapers that i had this guy called gascoigne crying over something and i had absolutely no idea what he was crying over and who gascoigne was you know, have you had that a similar experience where you've been cut off from mainstream media sort of news and you come back and actually life is slightly different? I've, um, yes, in a different way I've done it where I've come back and my own life has been different because things had changed because I'd been away for a long time. You know, um, my personal life changed dramatically and I had to adapt to that and it was a bit of a shock to the system. But again, it comes down to you come back you take the hit, you, you know, you, whatever happens, happens. You deal with it and then you eventually don't dwell on it. You just have to keep adapting. It's what humans do. It's not, this isn't going to be the first time where we as, whether it's a, a, a you know, as a global culture or whether it's as your own family culture where things aren't going to change. Nothing is forever. And you have to accept that and accept that life will always change and things will always change for you as an individual Things will always change for societies. Things will always change for different cultures. That's what happens. That's how that's it's been happening since we ever graced our presence on this planet, and it will continue to happen as long as we're here. It's. I think it's more about acceptance that things change. Changes are definite. So changes are definite, and for lots of people, their lives will have changed as a result of the of, of COVID, and adapting is 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 an easy thing to say isn't it but it's a complex practice to put into into place what we if you were to give some and you clearly had to adapt quite considerably with your personal life with the change from a military to a civilian career and then a, a civilian to a media career even um how what are your kind of what's what inside you gives you the strength to do that all the time what are your kind of top tips um is there's nothing profound with my top tips to be honest with you they're quite simple <laughs> for obvious <laughs> reasons <laughs> but um, um, um one that i do definitely live my life by nowadays is to be more like an 18 month old child like a toddler who's learning a lot about themselves we i still see myself when it comes to learning about myself as a toddler I, i'm going to be doing that for the rest of my life and so don't worry so much about what's already happened because it's happened it's done use it as a, as a building block and as a tool to learn from but don't keep dwelling on it secondly don't worry about what hasn't happened as in the future because it hasn't happened you're worrying about something that hasn't happened that's ridiculous 
and spend more time in the now, which is again boxing, you know, um, not boxing clever, sorry, but but living in that meter square that's around you and learning about yourself, spending time in the present. And I think if you do that, you 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 appreciate what's going on around you a lot more. You you're less anxious. And then when things do happen, you just roll with the punches and you learn how to adapt and you remind you you remain flexible in your mindset. And I've that's how I do things anyway. So I, I liken it in the simplest terms to an 18 month old kid. Do you, and I've heard you speak before, so this is based on uh, conversations that we've had before. You, you reach out for help now. Did you always do that? Or is that something that you've learned to do as a necessity um, because of your experiences? Mm. I think I've always done it, especially in the military, because you're taught, it's weird actually, back in the other day when I was in, you are taught all the time in, as a military person in that, in that clinical sense to talk about everything that's going on. If you need backup, talk about it. Get on the radio and say you need, you know, you need backup, you need, you know, whether it's close air support or you need medevac or you need to, you know, whatever it is, you're always taught to do that. And yet when it comes to yourself, as in, in your head, it was never, that was never spoken about. Um, fast forward a little bit and I've obviously progressed on from those days and I've learned how I manage my own mind and my own body. And I will always talk about what's going on with me as well. You know, sometimes over the last few weeks, I've turned around to, my missus and gone, do you know what? I feel a bit I feel a bit down today. You know, there's nothing, there's no shame in that. I just and, and actually sharing that with someone else, that in itself is is a is a yeah. So um going back to what you said is I've I've always had it in my mind to sort of ask for help when you need it, but not personally. And it's ever since that I did in the you know, back in sort of 2011, I think that was when it first started. That I've learned since that that is the right thing to do. It is for me. I believe, in my opinion, it is for most people, everyone out there, is, you know, if things are getting on top of you, have a chat with someone, look at how you fix it, get a little bit of grit and determination about you and crack on again. Is that how you would sum up your kind of conflict resolution style as well, in terms of, you know, we you end up having the quite immersive experiences and you know with time and expeditions one of the facets of going in expedition is is often is some low level conflict between team members because you're in such clo close proximity everybody's tired perhaps they're dehydrated they're quite hungry and it's a, a natural symptom of being in that in that environment together you know, conscious that, that that happens. How do you deal with those um, one of those, those kind of mental conflicts that are going on in your head where somebody is digging into you, but also in terms of your, your relationship and your fellow teammates? Um, again, it comes down to communication. You have to communicate. You can, if something's annoying you or getting, you know, getting you on your nerves or you disagree with something, you cannot communicate and it will just fester and get worse and worse and worse and you'll twist, your mind will twist it into something else or their, theirs will do the same. Or you can get it off your chest, talk about it and look at a resolution, look at a solution. And that in itself is productive. It's a positive thing. You know, by broaching something that's seen as negative can only be a positive that comes out of it. So for me, I mean, I'm with Ollie. We've been we've done a couple of uh, webinars this week about the corporates, and the one thing that always stands out when we do them, whether it's both of us together or or individually, is comms. You know, it's one of the most important things. It's what you you know you're always taught about it from the beginning of your military career right up until the end is comms. Even if you send a message, you're taught to acknowledge it, or you're taught to feed back into what you think about a plan, or you're taught to feed back into what you think about a certain idea and you know, that constant two-way communication keeps things at a level where people are fully understanding, which means they're not getting angry because their mind's making up their own decisions on what's going on around them, if that makes sense. It does, and I, I suspect you also do um, a good trade in the foxy stare. 
What do I? What's that then? I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, moving on. Um, so, and, the, and it kind of that was that sort of line of conversation was, was strung out of how do you think um, society is going to be different on the other side of COVID? Ooh. I'm kind of hoping for it to be different in a positive way. Um, I think we're going to be a lot more. I mean. As far as I'm concerned, and I'm no expert by a long shot, but I think, you know, the lockdown will be relaxed. It will be phased, you know, normality will be phased back in over a period of time because we can't go back to the way it was like that because of, you know, what's happening and what's, what will have happened. And so I think off the back end of that, I think people will be more aware of themselves, of the environment, of the people around them of how to conduct themselves if you know hygiene with you know even on something even with something as basic as hygiene personal hygiene i think that's become more of a prevalent thing i hope um and the way we do business as well you know a lot of people have found out that you don't actually have to go to every meeting under the sun you can actually do it like this which actually saves on whether it's cost of moving places the environment because of the carbon footprint you know i mean us as humans are always going to have a carbon footprint but it's about reducing it and trying to do things in a slightly more efficient streamlined way so hopefully it will be more along those sort of lines and i think hopefully we'll enjoy other people's company a bit more and be a bit more respectful of that sort of thing have you found yourself reaching out a lot more than you would have well one you would have done before but perhaps but perhaps because you've got more time to do it because we're um we're stuck in one place yes i have and at the same time i find myself having not spoken to people that i keep meaning to speak to because i keep running out of time <laughs> i'm like and i get more annoyed at myself because i'm like well there's no excuse now and I, I think you know i've said to i've messaged someone and been like right i'll chat to you later today and then the day's gone I'm going to bed and I'm like, I didn't speak to that. I'm like, oh. it's like, so yes, I do. But on, in a funny, weird way, there's still bits and people that slip through the net and I'm like, oh. there's, no, there's no excuse now. So I'm sort of like, sometimes find myself beating myself up a little bit. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way this end as well. Have you, um, mm. is there stuff that you've rediscovered <clears throat> by being, you know, because... I know you were, and I feel like I was running very, you know, running a lot to catch up and get to to do different projects to move on to the next thing. Are you finding that being in one place is giving you the chance to um, relook at some of the values, the way in which you are living your life, um, perhaps managing your relationships that you're going to attempt to take forward? Um. <clears throat> I think I'm going to try and make some more time for myself and my, you know, me and my, me and my missus at home, you know, um, we've, we've spent a lot of time together now. It's been quite, quite good. There is there's not a lot of being, not, there's not been a lot of friction. Shockingly. <laughs> I don't, I'm not normally used to, well, no, no, I'm not normally used to spending this amount of time with people. You know, I'm normally bouncing from one place to another. I'll go and do it an expedition with certain people then I'll come away from that and then whereas you know this is I'm I'm in something now and I don't know when it's going to end and it's gone all right which is great so maybe not as extreme as this but you know make sure that we make time for each other a little bit more on the flip side and and the lockdown caught you in New Zealand filming yeah well we do we hadn't even started the filming we were doing the sort of prep and rehearsal phase so is, are you going back to refilm that when's that likely to be to be aired what's the plan um well it was going to be this year it won't it's not going to go out this year uh that was it was for an Auss, it was for aussie an aussie network as well so it wasn't for the uk but i mean they've spent a lot of money on that so it will happen when that will happen i don't know i don't i I personally don't think we're going to get to shoot until next year because where we were in the South Island, you know, very shortly in a few, you know, in a couple of months time, it's going to be, you know, 
there's going to be six foot of snow up there and it's going to make things look completely different. We were there in the summer and it looked amazing. And that was how they wanted it to be. So it's going to, I think, again, in my own opinion, could be wrong. They might decide to roll with an Arctic looking version, but, or Antarctic, because we're down that side, that, that, that end. Uh, yeah, who knows? But it, it, everything as far as that kind of work is, is on hold, is postponed. What's happening with the UK version of um, SAS Who Dares Wins? What's the plan there? Um, the the planning and the the planning still going ahead, but again, we normally shoot that late September, all of October, so that's still a bit of distance away, and no one can really be sure if if it if it is able to happen. Great. If not, then we look at another option for pushing it later earlier next year depends on how this all pans out to be honest with you it's all is we're in limbo aren't we everyone's in we're in this void period but um with your overseas projects being put on hold i you've been telling me that you're keeping yourself busy anyway regardless with stuff you're doing in the uk yeah so you've got um me and ollie have got the uh We've got a fitness app that was launched earlier in the year. That's keeping me busy. We're also delivering free content in relation to that app, which is on the social platform. So we're doing like live at 10 a.m., which is it's taking its toll, to be honest. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we're just we're sort of like we're still doing uh, recording corporate web webinars that we can send out or doing live webinars via like zoom or other other platforms and yeah we, we've been keeping busy with things like that we've got a, you know we've had podcasts coming up and interviews like this so it's good it's good to have these sort of things in the in the bag or or, or in the diary so we can you know focus on stuff have you got another because last year you kayak the the yukon have you got another big expedition in the offing i haven't at the moment not not one that's hardwired into the diary no but there will be something coming what it looks like i'm not sure yet we we'll probably do a little bit of we'll do some micro adventures around the uk i reckon when i say micro you know i wouldn't mind paddling another river but in the uk like the seven or something you know taking the taking the local scenery for a change and appreciate where i live uh, so there's a yeah there'll be something like that and you could tie that into uh kayaking with the seven ball which would make life substantially easier it was going the other way i guess i'm not sure which way do they are, which way does the seven ball come up the channel or down the channel does it does it not go up does it though go down does it go down towards i, I thought it I, went I, natural i thought it would go that way well, I assume. Let's find out. As I've said, it, when's it? When's it thought, due? I'm not, I'm not sure. I guess it's based on tides and uh, and full moons and season or something. But I'm sure somebody listening to this interview will be able to put something in the comments about oh, where no. exactly it is. I'll, I'll know after this interview because I'll Google it. Exactly. You've been very gracious with your time joining the, joining us in Italy when we do done our Wemski sort of mini conference in the Italian Alps you know and obviously our friends there have been locked down for quite a long time now but I know some of the mm. some of the the lessons that you shared in that mini conference and some of the philosophies you shared will become will be, will be proving really useful for some of the delegates that are now on the front on the front line so I'm sure from them I can say thank you to, to you for that. Mm. No, no, not not at all. It's, 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 I'm, I'm, hopefully, something I do say helps someone somewhere. I mean, if you could, um, if you could send a message to the frontline healthcare workers and all those key workers, including you know porters, janitors, delivery workers, all the people that are keeping our society going and enabling us to put, still put food in our water, and to know that we have a medical system that will support us if we get ill, what would it be? It would be to um, acknowledge your emotions at this time, give them the respect they deserve, and then to turn them into a positive in your own head. Because 
if I liken it to that fear must be something that's flying around all over the place on that front line now, because there is a fear of the unknown, fear of the enemy, which is, you know, COVID-19. And um, for me, I'll try and draw the parallels, you know, when I as a, you know, special forces soldier, as a professional soldier used to go out on the ground, it was about doing the basics well, so all the things that you were taught, especially in most of that came down to the equipment that you wear and the way you wore it and the way that you went about your business. It's about making sure that you keep on top of that, look for support from people that you're out there doing it with because only they will really get it. And, and it's okay to talk to them about how you feel and maybe check in and just say, you know what, this is a little bit worrying. Then you'll find out that they're probably in the same boat and you won't feel so alone. And you can go out there, remind each other what you need to do and then go and, you know, the job that you're doing is valid and it's important and there will be an element of fear that comes with it because that's only natural you know your humans fighting on the front line so there is a fear element to it but i'd say use that fear as you know know, turn it it's your emotion to do with what you wish to turn it into a positive you know make it focus you on what you need to focus on you know whether it's getting the ppe on properly and correctly so you're you know that's one worry checked off and then you can concentrate on the technical side of your job or whatever it is that you need to get done and how you've been taught it to then do it to the best of your ability and then also remember that there's other people on that front line with you that you can check in with you can give them a radio check we you know that's what we used to do we used to check in with each other make sure everyone was doing the right thing was in the right position if you know that there's someone there with you it makes you feel less lonely and make sure that you've got that buddy buddy system going on make sure they've got your back and you've got theirs and you'll come together as a team and again i just you know I'd like to reiterate to use you know use that that emotion fear as a positive turn it turn it into something that focuses you onto on on what it is that you need to do and I think using your experience um, as a special forces soldier and, you know, and the fight against COVID, I think those are really, really valuable sort of lessons there to be, to be taken on board. Foxy, as always, it's been a, a pleasure talking to you and getting your insights. Um, and we look forward with pleasure to hopefully seeing you at the WEM conference in October. Um, but if not, then you know, again in the near future, you know, good luck with all the projects that you have in the, in the pipeline. And, and it'll be great to hear about all your, uh, your, your the planned expedition, whatever that may be. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. And likewise for you, because I know you'll have something crazy coming up at some point. So let's stay in touch. Perfect. But thanks thank for having you. me on. Pleasure. Thank you, Foxy. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Take it easy. <laughs>